thank you very much to the organizers for inviting me. Um, it's, uh, yeah, definitely one of my first in-person uh, events that I've been to, so it's lovely to see um, people in person again and actually meet some people um, who I've only seen on Zoom. So, um, yes, yeah, so I'm going to talk about modelling ambiguity and metaphor with density matrices. So uh, Dominic's given quite a good lead in because he said, oh, you don't need anything complicated to do it. You can just do it with vectors. Um, so uh, uh, I will, well, I hadn't prepared for that. <laughs> so we'll see, uh, we'll see what I come up with. Okay. Sure. <laughs> okay, so... Um, so something that I'm interested in general is how concepts compose and we can think of concepts as being mediated by the language that they're expressed in. So if you just read these, then as you read these sentences, you sort of do something where you're creating meanings on the fly. You know, you might not have read this uh, sentence about black mamba before. Um, we do, we kind of create meanings here, we're using sort of metaphor here for England's players need to lift themselves, so they're lifting their spirits, they're not actually lifting themselves, and so on. Um, and so what I'm going to talk about is uh, a way of modelling meaning that we can start to, um, we can start to use, um, we can start to use these sort of metaphorical constructions there. Okay, so here's an outline of the talk. I'm going to give a background into categorical, compositional, distributional semantics. Lots of you are probably already very familiar with this, so I'm just going to skate over it quite quickly. And then I'm going to talk about um, some work we did about 18 months ago now, um, talking about looking at how to build density matrices to express lexical ambiguity. And then I'm going to talk about how we Build, um, build these density matrices from large-scale corpora using kind of neural models. So it's going to be a new, an extension of word to vec to density matrices. Um, and then I'll, I'll just talk about density matrices for metaphor. So basically applying what we already have to a kind of small metaphorical data set and some further work, and specifically in further work, I'm going to talk about some work that Saskia Brun has done, who is here, um, and she's kind of taken some of this and, um, and applied it in, on a quantum simulator. So all of this work is done with students uh, Francois Meyer and James Owers, and um, yeah, so with no further ado, I'll get on with it. So categorical, compositional, distributional semantics. So how should we represent meaning? On the one hand, we could do something that is very suited to composition. We could have some kind of way of um, representing uh, words and how they compose as some kind of logical or grammatical kind of constructions, and that will tell us how we can go from these individual words up to some meaning of a sentence, and that's been successful. Um, but on the other hand, we can also look at representing words in a more uh, kind of vector-based or region-based uh, way. And, that, and that's nice because, for example, we have that, um, let's say if we have a vector space with dimensions cuddly, smelly, and scaly, then we can see that cat and dog are kind of close to each other an iguana is further away. And so this closeness in the vector space is supposed to represent closeness of meaning. And so how do we link those two, both of those two useful things? So um, we have, on the one hand, we've got this sentence, smelly baby cuddles dad. Um, on the, the side here, we've got some kind of representation of the words in some kind of uh, continuous spaces and we want to compose, com combine those two into one thing. And this is what um, Bob and Manoush and Steve Clark um, came up with in 2010 or maybe a little bit before. And essentially the idea is that this grammatical composition on the left hand side here um, kind of goes in, is expressed as these cups on the bottom of the diagram here, and then whatever you decide to represent as your meaning, you set up your meaning representations in such a way that you can then plug the meaning representations 
onto the top, and this will tell us how to um, compose these meanings together. And so in, uh, this, uh, in the original work here from 2010, we had that, you know, these, uh, these triangles with a single, uh, single string coming out of them are basically vectors. The triangles with more than one string coming out of them we can think of as multilinear maps that you can then plug together. And then these, um, the cups here, we are basically tensor contraction. So if, that's, if, you, if you're happy with kind of thinking about tensor contraction and so on, that's how you can, which it, if you're not happy about tensor contraction, you can think of it as just kind of an extension of matrix multiplication. And indeed, as Dominic said, there was a paper on um, nouns of vectors, adjectives, and matrices. So here we've got this baby, who's an, which is a noun. And smelly is an adjective. And then plugging baby into smelly is just matrix multiplication and gives back a smelly baby. OK, so, so this is nice. And as Dominic did just say, we ca you can do a fair bit of, um, you can express a fair bit of ambiguity in these ways. And, and, um, and this was actually shown by um, people like Manouche and um, Dimitri, who, who, ha who have developed a kind of set of, um, a set of uh, sentences where the, I'll talk about it in more detail, but essentially the idea is that you want to uh, build um, sentence representations for each sentence and then disambiguate the sentences based on which sentence, which of the two kind of paraphrases of one sentence is closer to the original. So you might have something like um, shoulders, shoulders slump um, is, and then you could paraphrase that either as shoulders decline or shoulders slump. And shoulders slump is closer to shoulders slouch than shoulders decline. So you can do um, ambiguity um, in this way. However, within um, the kind of, within the sort of vector space model, there is also this natural, um, the, this very natural passage to using density matrices for ambiguity. So with, um, so with density matrices, you're mixing together different states. You don't know exactly which state you're in. And those, and we think of those states as being word meanings, essentially. So vectors for word meanings. So what's the problem with ambiguity? Well, it's been described as some by some people as an AI complete problem, with, um, with meaning that um, if you can solve this difficult problem, then you're sort of well on the way to solving the whole of AI. You can sort of take that with a pinch of salt, but there we go. And so one of the, one of the um, problems is to disambiguate a particular word given the context. So in this problem here, you might have these two sentences. So there's a lot of trash on the bed of the river, or I keep a glass of water next to my bed when I sleep. And the task there is to say, do they, does bed have the same meaning in each case or a different meaning? Um, and this, there's a big uh, data set here developed in 2019 um, that you can, you can use to look at that. And there's also um, ambiguity in word types, of course. So you can have, I walked up the drive. The drive is a noun. It is actually something that you drive up. Um, but I love to drive is a verb. So there's ambiguity in word types as well. And the another part, another problem here is um, is that obviously we we're not always pointed out which word we have to disambiguate. You know, if I'm talking in a sentence, and um, I can be using words which may have uh, many different meanings, and these are um, and what you need to do is you need to kind of disambiguate the words on the fly. And humans are very good at doing this, of course. So, um, uh, so in this sentence here, they were troubled by insects while playing cricket. You know, each of these words here have 
masses of meanings. This one, I mean, you probably can't read it, but this one goes down to 13 meanings. This one goes to 35 meanings. So if you were just going to do it um, combinatorially, you're going to have a, a kind of masses of um, versions of this sentence that you need to then choose which is the correct sentence. Um, and Dimitri and Manouche showed that if you do actually disambiguate word meanings before um, composing them together, then, um, then you get better results. So we can see that if you, if you take a disambiguation step, you get better results. However, we don't necessarily want to do that. Okay? So the solution that we come up with here is using density matrices. So the nice idea here is that we have, we, we're going to use density matrices. We're going to encode different word meanings um, into, by mixing together the word meanings in a density matrix. And then the idea is, is that w as you compose the matrices together, the, um, the, disambigu the ambiguity resolves in the composition. And this is what we do, this is kind of what, you, what we do in real life, and this is what we hope to model by doing this. Okay, so as I said, you can just take, you take these diagrams, you set, up your, um, you set up your meaning representation in such a way that you can just plug them into the top of the kind of grammar diagram down here. And so when we use density matrices, um, we can think of these with single, um, single legs just as density matrices. We could think of these ones with more than one leg as kind of um, po completely positive maps that take density matrices to other density matrices. And then these cups are now the partial trace. And this was worked out for... Um, in a linguistic context by um, Robin Pierre de Le, Dimitri, uh, Bob, and Manouche. And so I'm going to talk about basically, so they kind of set up this whole um, program for on the linguistic side. So I'm going to talk a little bit about what they've done first. So what do we do? So, um, so how can we represent a word as a density matrix? Well, Given any word vector, we can always lift it to a projection matrix. So if we've got a word vector for cat, we can form the um, projection matrix um, that is just uh, cat, uh, you take this sort of outer product with itself. And if, um, I mean, I'm guessing most people here are okay with these angle brackets, but if you're not, you can think of um, cat. So this kind of angle bracket is just like a column vector, basically. And this is like a row vector. OK, and we're just multiplying these together. So going back to this uh, example of um, the riverbed and the bed that you sleep in, then we can take um, a, uh, we can find a sense vector for riverbed and create the projection operator there. We can find a sense vector for the bed that you sleep in, create a projection operator there, and then we just mix these together. So we multiply by some probability, like the probability that you actually see it as a river versus see it as a sleeping bed, and add them together. OK, so that's fine. We can do, you know, we can do that, but then we need to actually find these different senses. And what um, Robin and co. do in their paper is um, they cluster the vectors of the context words that you see. So you take a big corpus of text, um, you, go, you go through looking for the word bed, and every time you see the word bed, you write down what words you see around it, and then you get the vectors for all the con those, so the words you see around it we call context words, you get the vectors for all of those context words, and then you cluster those vectors. So you can use so, yeah, some, just some kind of clustering algorithm, and you take the centroids of those clusters, and, and, you, um, and you say that those are the vectors for the individual senses of, of the word. 
Um, I think that, you, so you can do it in such a way that you, you don't have to predict in advance how many clusters you're expecting and so on. So that gives us the actual, um, that gives us the density matrices for each word. Um, but so far we've only said how to build, um, how to build density matrices that are all in the same space. So the, the noun matrices, the verb matrices, um, the adjective matrices are all going to be in the same space. Um, and so what we need to do is we need to have a way of lifting the matrices from, for verbs and adjectives up to, um, up to a sort of bigger space that allows us to um, that allows us to sort of treat them as as the as maps as the maps that we need. And so um, these have been developed in a few different papers, um, Bob and Konstantinos and myself, and also me with Gemma and some other people. Um, so one is to use this uh, phaser. So each. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. So we have phaser, which is um, okay. So each of the the n and the v are density matrices. You take the square root of the verb matrix and multiply it on either side of the noun matrix, and that gives you back another density matrix. Um, what fuzz does? So I don't know about guitar pedals. I actually called these b mult and k mult, which is. <laughs> Okay, okay. <laughs> um, so. You came up with another one. Oh, yeah, we came up with another one, yeah. So, uh, yeah, so, so, which I will talk about in a sec. So, um, okay, so fuzz is um, basically you, you take the spectral decomposition of the verb and you take the, the projectors um, and multiply on either side and then of, of the noun and then sum over, take the weighted sum there. So mult is just, mult is just a um, pointwise multiplication, um, but it is, it, that still is the, the right kind of um, map that we need. And then um, Gemma and I with um, some other people um, kind of put together this sort of program of um, thinking about a whole range of operators where basically, uh, I mean, essentially you just have a sort of uh, a CP map that you use to lift um, whatever your, whatever your um, like your verb matrix up to, um, up to the right, uh, up to the right size. And, um, and then you can, yeah, and then you can sort of work out various options for this compra using just like spiders and so on if you, if you want to. But I'm not, I'm not going to talk about all of that here, I'm afraid. Okay, so um, yeah, so these are like some options for how to build phrases and sentences out of words. And what did um, Robin and Dimitri and, and co. do in their paper? Well, they, they just used um, MALT. And this is just one example. So basically, they learnt, um, they learnt density matrices for organ, vessel, queen, nail. And then, on either, and then they also used two different um, adjectives. So for example, music organ, body organ, blood vessel, navel vessel. And what this, um, what this table is showing is that when you, if you have the noun, so the noun is ambiguous, it could be a music, uh, it could be a blood vessel or a navel vessel, and so on. And then when you compose um, that with the adjective, the von Neumann entropy of uh, the density matrix reduces. So these numbers are the, uh, the entropy of the matrix, the kind of measure of mixedness of the matrix. Um, and in composition, those values decrease. So, so there's a kind of demonstration that this works. Okay, so interim summary. We've got, um, we have DiscoCat, we can use it with density matrices, and this gives us um, a sort of extended way of work of modeling lexical ambiguity. The hope is that ambiguity resolves in composition, um, and we've seen that it does. Um, a number of composition operators have been proposed, 
but then we still have this question, how can we build density matrices at, at larger scale? So that's where we're going to go now. So our starting point for this is the word to vec algorithm. So this was developed by Thomas Mikuloff and various other people. This is the credit for the image. So I'll just talk very briefly about the image. So the idea is you've got, we've got uh, x1 down to xv here. Um, v is the size of the vocabulary, and this just tells you which word you're going to try and model here. This gives you a, um, there's a, there's a um, hidden layer in the middle, which goes down to the dimension of the vector you want. So the hidden layer, let's say you want 300 dimensional vectors. This hidden layer is going to be 300 dimensions. Um, we've got another matrix of parameters here. And then the idea is that when you put in a word, um, what you want to do is to come out with a probability distribution over which other words in your vocabulary you're likely to see that word along. And this is what you're training, um, training the, um, the individual parameters of the matrices to do. And this is, the, um, this is the quantity that we're trying to maximize. And what is it? Well, we've got our target word. We take the inner product of our target word with our context word um, that we do see it alongside. And then we're going to have a certain number of negative samples. And so here we've got the negative of the inner product of our target word with our context word. So we want to make these inner products where we've got the target word and the context word that we want to see together. We want to make these bigger so we're going to try and we're going to make these bigger and we want to make these quantities, these negative quantities, smaller, okay? Um, and then there's some other bits in there you don't have to worry about too much, but essentially we want to yeah, make these inner products bigger and these inner products close, yeah, smaller, yeah. So, and then when you've, when you've done this training, basically these what you end up with is that the vector of um, the target words are in this matrix here, and then you have another set of vectors for the words considered as context words, which are in this matrix here. And you just, you just take this, and it's going to be, you know, V number of words, your vocabulary size number of words, each having a vector of length 300 or whatever you're choosing. Okay, so that, that gives you a sort of um, overview of word to vec. So how can, we how can we use word to vec to learn density matrices? Okay, so one, um, one uh, very, so one naive idea would be, so we're just gonna initialize these um, vectors. Oh yeah, sorry, one, yeah, well, so, um, we're going to initialize these vectors with density matrices. Um, and then we're going to try again to maximize this quantity where now we've kind of put in density matrices here instead of words. So, when, so what I should have said earlier is that when we maximize this quantity, what we're going to end up, we use gradient ascent. And the gradient is going to have so this, like the positive part of the gradient, is going to have a small multiple of, um, let's say, so if we're trying to maximize for the, if we're trying to um, tune the parameters of the target words, we're going to get a small multiple of the context word um, that, that we're going to be adding in to the target word to get it closer to the target word. Um, so if we initialize it with, with density matrices, this would work um, because we're always adding in some multiple of a, another density matrix, which is fine. But here, instead of adding in, 10 minutes, here, instead of adding in, we are subtracting. So we can't really use this directly to build a density matrix. So what we did instead was we said, well, we're going to train 
some parameters of matrices B, multiply them together to form the density matrix, and then and train the parameters by optimizing this quantity here. So that was one option. Um, the next option was actually just that we just learn multiple vectors in each of these, and then we mix them together. So the multiple vectors are hopefully represent the sensors. Another option we had was to use um, BERT. So we ran BERT over a corpus. Uh, we extract like a contextual embedding for each word, reduce the dimensionality of those embeddings a bit because they'd be quite big if you just used them. Um, and then we mix together those word sensors to create density matrices. And what we get in the Oh yeah, and so here's the sort of experiments. So as I said, you could have like something like value slump, value decline is a high similarity example. Value slump, value slouch is a low similarity example. So if I have value slump, I want my representation of value decline to be closer to value slump than value slouch is. And we get quite nice results from this. So basically, the, the one that works best was the multi-sense word to DM. Um, we, find that, um, we find that on, I think, a couple of, two of the data sets we outperform, um, for example, BERT, standard BERT used as a sentence encoder. For other, um, other ones, we don't quite outperform it, but we get... Um, but there's no significant difference between the results. So we get good results there. And we also see, for example, that the mixedness of the representations correlate with the number of senses of a word. And again, we did a similar experiment to, um, to Manoush and, um, and Dimitri and Robin. And we saw that as you um, compose words together, then ambiguity resolves as well. Okay, so in an interim summary, we have that we have, um, so we've got these methods for building density matrices from, from corpora. The um, multi-sense DM was basically the most, multi-sense word to DM was the most successful. Okay, so now how can we start applying this to metaphor? So, so far we've just done um, conventional metaphor. So, conventional metaphor is when you have a metaphorical word that, um, a metaphorical word that has been uh, accepted into the language um, as, a, um, as, as, a, as just a, another meaning of the word. So, we, bu we built a paraphrase data set, so it's quite small. We've just got uh, 200 metaphorical sentences. So you might have, he showered her with presents. And then you've got apt paraphrases, so he provided her with presents. It's not a fantastic paraphrase, but it, you know, it, does, it does kind of mean the same thing. Versus he sprinkled her with presents doesn't actually mean the same thing at all. Um, so we tested this with state-of-the-art sentence encoders and also our density matrix models, um, but all of these were pretty rubbish, basically. So, um, so here's the results for sentence. So we've got sentence BERT, infocent, infocent 2, and these figures are Spearman's row. Um, basically, dark red means really bad. Um, dark blue means slightly good, but not very, and these pale ones mean uh, basically just completely random. So the, um, here the correlations were random. Um, here we don't get a huge amount going on. These are just with plain word to vec and glove vectors. What we do see, which is expected, is that if you just use the vector of the verb, then um, you, you don't get a good result. And that's to be expected because the vector of the verb uh, is going to be the most common meaning in the corpus, and that's probably not the sort of metaphorical meaning that we want. Okay, so here's a bit of a complicated diagram. I'll just pull out a few bits. So as you can see here, so this is where, so down the side here, we've got various different models that we used the, the uh, density matrix models. Here we use these, the kind of composition operation, which there's no composition, we just use the verb. 
no disambiguation, um, we get bad results. Um, here, these two sets of columns are where we use the verb as an operator onto the noun, and again, we get worse results. On these columns, we get, we're using the noun as a modifier onto the verb matrix, and we get slightly better results. So it's kind of sort of saying that the noun is a bit more important here. And then um, finally, just to point out that actually the BERT to DM density matrix um, model would kind of worked better here, um, even though it didn't with kind of standard ambiguity. Okay, so you've had time to read the interim summary. So further work, um, Saskia has done some work um, uh, doing this on quantum simulators. So she took just the plain word to DM model, not the multi-sense model. Um, it's a, some a sort of variational algorithm, I think. You're training the parameters of this unitary here, tracing out over this subsystem, and then optimizing the output based on this, um, this uh, uh, objective function. And I won't go through the experiment because I sense we're running out of time, but essentially we've got a, she's done an experiment um, which has, it kind of has nice results. So it's a kind of, it's basically a um, word embedding experiment with density matrices in simulation. Okay, so there's tons of like further work to do here. Um, if anyone's interested, do come and, you know, do ask me questions or come and talk to me in the breaks. Um, and just to say thank you all for listening, and if you'd like to get in touch, here's my email address. Thank you.